Good evening and welcome to another edition of Attack Wrap. Co-host Zach Scribner joined alongside Adrian Musso. We're joined by Denny Gore and William Portacalis of the Orange Sound Attack. It's the final episode before we take a mini Christmas break. Guys, uh, thank you for taking time for doing the show. And uh, first question for you guys, what's on your Christmas list this year? Uh, uh, my Christmas list, I'm a big Lululemon guy. So I got a ton of Lululemon stuff, whether it's pants all the way to sweaters. You can have, I guess you can never really go wrong with Lulu. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I love, I love my Lulu clothes. Yeah, probably about the same. Definitely some new clothes. But I've been looking, I don't have a basketball jersey yet. So I'll probably look to find a, a good basketball jersey, get one of those. You can't go wrong with the, uh, the Raptors New City jersey. Those, those are really yeah. nice. Yeah, uh, really nice. Just before we go around some stuff uh, around the league, what was your favorite Christmas gift as a kid? We'll start with Denny. Oh, probably when I was younger, getting the new, always a new stick at Christmas. But I remember I really, I was a big fan of the Easton RS. I remember really liking that, that stick. Yeah, me, I was, uh, growing up, I was a really big Spider-Man fan. So I'd always used to get, like, all these, like, Marvel and DC kind of, like, superhero toys. And I was always, like, obsessed with it. So. I love getting those, and then I guess as I grew grew older a little bit, like Danny said, a new hockey stick under the tree was always like you were you were the best thing, like you were the new hot shot around the league. So I uh, I love that as well. Christmas definitely for us fast approaching. We're only eleven days away. Let's go uh, with some stuff around the league. Starting out with the OHL Player of the Week is Lucas Edmonds from the Kingston Frontenacs. He had four goals and added eight assists for 12 points over three games. He had an impressive weekend where he recorded at least three points in those three straight wins. The OHL Goalie of the Week is a familiar name to attack fans. Matt Goose of the Barry Colts had a 2-0 record with a goal against average of 0.96. Goose have picked up his sixth career shutout Sunday against North Bay. Ethan Burroughs has been named the Huron Tractor Attack Player of the Week. Ethan was a big factor in Owen Sound's comeback win Friday night. He had two goals and one assist, and he had 12 shots registered on net and was named the first star of the game. Saturday night, Burroughs continued his good weekend with a goal and an assist. Turning over to some stats around the league, we'll start out with the OHL standings. The London Knights continue to lead the Western Conference by a slim margin. The Knights sit at 35 points, five points ahead of the Sioux Greyhounds, who are in second. However, a big win Saturday afternoon for the Guelph Storm against London has them just one point behind the Knights for the top spot in the conference. In fourth place are the Windsor Spitfires. They're one point behind the Greyhounds for the West Division lead. With a big weekend, the attacker in fifth with 27 points, two points ahead of Flint. The Kitchener Rangers are in seventh, just one point ahead of Sarnia and Saginaw. And the Erie Otters are last in the conference with 16 points. In the East, an eight-game win streak has the Kingston Frontenacs top of the Eastern Conference. North Bay leads their division with 34 points, putting them in second. The Hamilton Bulldogs are in third, two points ahead of the Mississauga Steelheads, who are in fourth. The Barry Colts, they're on a five-game winning streak, putting them fifth in the conference, two points ahead of the Ottawa 67s. In seventh are the Oshawa Generals with 25 points. Eighth place is the Peterborough Peets, one point ahead of Sudbury, who are set to resume their games this weekend. And the Niagara Ice Dogs are last in the conference. Lucas Edmonds of the Frontenacs overtakes Brandon Coe for the top spot in the OHL scoring race. Edmonds' incredible weekend has him four points ahead of Brandon Coe. In third is Matt Bay Petrov, who has 44 points, two points ahead of Rory Karen. In fifth is Luke Evangelista, Evangelista, who will be on a mission after being cut by Team Canada. In sixth is Wyatt Johnson with 39 points. He's two points ahead of Kyle Jackson of North Bay. There's a tie for eighth place, Brennan Othman and Logan Morrison, who each have 36 points. Rounding out the top 10 is Team USA forward Sasha Pasajov. Looking at the attack at the attack top 10 in scoring, guest of the show, Denny Gore leads the team in scoring with 26 points, four points ahead of overage defense and Andrew Parrott, who has one goal and 21 assists on the season. Ethan Burroughs and Servak Petrovsky each have 20, tying them for the third spot. Stefan Makachek and Cedric Gaindon each have 18 points, leaving them tied for fifth. Colby Barlow is seventh in team scoring with 15 points, two points ahead of guest William Portacalis, who's had a nice transition to Owen Sound after the trade. Gavin Bryant returned to the attack lineup last week and has 12 points this year, one point ahead of Thomas Chafe, who rounds out the top 10 in scoring with 11 points. 
Next up is the CHL Team of the Week. The OHL dominated this week's edition of the C- Canadian Hockey League Team of the Week with four of the six players coming from the O. The forward trio is co- composed solely of OHL players, including OHL Forward of the Week, Lucas Hedman. His teammate in Kingston, Jordan Praska, joins the CHL Team of the Week uh, fun in, with his efforts this weekend that included seven goals and three assists in three games. Rounding out the forward group is New York Rangers first round pick Brendan Nothman of the Flint Firebirds who picked up four goals and three assists for seven points in three games. Four of those coming in one game against Erie. On the blue line is Victoria the Tigers overage rear guard Vincent Sivigny Impressed with eight points, counting three goals and five assists over three contests. The native of Quebec City, Simini, also brought home QMJHL Player of the Week honors. Also on the back end is Tri-City Americans rookie blue liner, Lucas Dragicevic, who collected five points, counting two goals and three assists over a pair of appearances en route to WHL Player of the Week. Finally, between the pipes, we have Matt Gusta. On the, on the season, the Knoxville, Tennessee native has impressed in coming up with a 10-5-0-1 record alongside a 9-17 save percentage at 2.82 goals against average from his time here in Owen Sound and in Barrie. And uh, guys, I think it's safe to say it's the best time of the year for junior hockey. The Team Canada World Junior Team has been announced and plenty of OHL players are on the roster. Brett Rochu of the London Knights is one of the three goalies on the squad. Sue Greyhounds captain Ryan O'Rourke and Grand Rapids defenseman Donovan Sabrango were the two rear guards on the team. Up front, Shane Wright of the Frontenacs, Mason McTavish from Peterborough, Manitoba Moose forward Cole Perfetti, uh, who previously played in Saginaw, and Will Cooley will, of the Windsor Spitfires will all play big roles for Team Canada. Interesting to note, Connor Bedard of the Regina Pats was named on the roster. He's just the seventh 16-year-old ever to make the team. Just to name a few guys who made it at 16, Connor McDavid. Sidney Crosby, and Wayne Gretzky. All right, guys. Now let's get to talking to you guys, uh, get to know you guys a little bit better. Will, we'll start with you after the big trade in November. What was the message from GM, GM Dale DeGray and the coaching staff upon arrival? Yeah, no, they were uh, they were super welcoming, of course. Um, I thought coming over to a new city, for me, it was, it was going to be a tough transition, but Throughout my time here, the coaching staff, Dale, the guys, they've all made it super homey for me. And I think coming here, they want me to play a big role on the scoring side of things and obviously on the defensive side as well. But their big thing was helping for a big forward push and getting points and putting puck in the net. You've, you've been doing just about that. Six goals upon arrival, as uh, Zach mentioned earlier. Now, give the viewers at home maybe a little bit of uh, what your what your game's like if they haven't been out to the Bay Shore yet to see you play. Yeah, no, um, I'm a six-foot forward. Uh, kind of bounce around between the wing and centerman. And uh, I think I'm a pretty good 200-foot player. And uh, I'm a playmaker. But when the shot's there and it's open, I'm not afraid to... Uh, let one go and hope it goes in the net but yeah no I like to use my body in the corner and make room for other guys now last season guys was a very difficult season for both of you and guys like I felt especially guy, bad for guys like you guys and uh, Caleb Lawrence Ethan Burroughs who it was their draft draft year was stripped away as well um, what was it like last year and what were the, your thoughts and feelings going out through the uncertainty of the year that was. We'll start with you, Denny. Uh, it was tough for sure going going into next year, having a year under the belt, hoping to have some success and hopefully be able to get drafted. It was pretty disappointing not having a season, but just trying to stay in shape during COVID, you know, working out as much as possible when the gyms were open and even when they weren't doing Zoom videos with uh, my trainer and stuff to stay in shape. But it was definitely a battle, but it is what it is and you just got to fight through it. Yeah, no, uh, I got to agree with Danny there. Uh, for me, I think a lot of guys will um, have different sprouts and grow differently than others. And I thought last year was a big growing year for me. And I think um, it would have been a year that would have been nice to be playing in the OHL and have a great chance of getting drafted. But 
uh, obviously that didn't happen. So fortunately enough, I got the opportunity to go play overseas to be able to play there and keep my conditioning and keep my head in the game throughout the whole COVID time. And yeah, you know, uh, not everyone gets to be as fortunate as I was. And for a lot of the guys that it was their draft year, they were draft eligible. It's definitely hard to be able to come back and keep a positive mindset. Now, going into the draft uh, that was held in July, Denny, you were ranked 83rd among Central Scouting North American skaters, but didn't hear your call- name called that day. Um, I would imagine that the feeling of disappointment fueled you for the that, this coming season. Yeah, going into the draft, I really didn't have any idea what to expect. I saw some draft rankings had me on there. Some didn't. It was uh, I really had no idea, you know, not having a season. It was it was tough to know what to expect going into the draft. My agent just said, look, you could get drafted for sure, or you could just fall late in the later rounds or just get not drafted at all. It was, it was a long way, a long day for sure. Just It was a tough one, but knowing I got a chance this year to do the same thing is just fueled me to train harder during the summer and get better for this year. Now, uh, Denny, you mentioned a bit of off-season training there. Uh, how did you guys manage to stay in shape throughout? Did you guys find yourself doing anything out of the ordinary uh, to work out during the uh, off time from the pandemic? Yeah, my trainer from the gym, since we weren't allowed to go to the gym, he lended me a bunch of equipment to use at home, and we'd go on Zoom calls, and he'd run through our workouts that we normally did at the gym, but we were all at our own homes in our garages or stuff like that where we could get a workout in. Yeah, no, same same thing as Denny. Uh, I got lent a little bit of uh, gym equipment that I threw in my garage, and just through Zoom and FaceTime calls with my trainer, I would, he would just give me stuff to do, and I would just go in there and do it because it was tough because everything was closed. Now, uh, throughout the pandemic, William, you spent some time in Slovakia scoring 14 points in 22 games. Uh, a few questions on that. What was the style of hockey like there, and what led you to having some success in a league you weren't very familiar with? Yeah, um, going, going in, uh, I remember my first game, I stepped on the ice and I looked over uh, across the red line and I was the smallest guy on both teams. Like these guys were towering over me and I was like, where am I? Like I had no clue what I got myself into, but um, I think the biggest thing um, success wise was getting that monkey off my back. My first game, Uh, I was pretty fortunate enough to score. And I think moving forward, I gained a lot of confidence from just watching those other guys play and getting constant feedback from the coaches telling me I'm doing a good job. And I had some company over there as well with some guys I grew up playing with uh, in the GTHL. And I think them being there as well kind of made it an easier transition for me because I got to live with them. But yeah, the style of play there was super, super fast paced. I think um, going into a pro league and you're playing against older guys with a lot more experience you kind of gotta put your head down and just go and go into every corner and just make sure that you're going to come out with that puck and give a little couple nudges and not to be afraid but yeah I think for sure it was a big change of pace for the game and obviously a lot more physical. How did the uh, opportunity first present itself for you to go over to Slovakia? Uh, I was just through like my agent uh I was constantly talking with him, saying I want to try and get somewhere to play. Like I was bored and out of my mind at home. I'm sure same as everybody else. And um, he made a couple calls. And fortunately enough, there was a team over there that was looking for a couple of players. And he he said he kind of called me up and said, "Listen, this is a big opportunity. Um, it's a professional league over there. It's not something that you're going to go over there and be." the best or treat it as if it's like a kitty kind of game. They're going over there and you're going to be playing with and against the men. Like you ought to take it seriously and leave it all out there on the line. And I kind of just, I was like, okay, I talked to my parents about it and we thought it was the best decision for me. And I think it was probably one of the best moves I've made so far. Now, Denny, before the start of the season, you participated in the PBHH tournament that was really led uh, by Andrew Parrott. What was that experience like for you? Uh, participating in that tournament with some attack teammates alongside you? 
Well, that tournament, uh, it was a... Uh... It was pretty tough for me because I played. I only ended up playing one game there. The second game, I ended up getting hurt with a shoulder injury, so I ended up, only ended up playing one game. But it, overall, it was a great experience. You know, being in COVID that whole time, not seeing all the boys, it was it was good to be able to go and spend two weeks with all the guys at a hotel, having a good time. But the playing aspect of it was uh, pretty tough for me. William, you also participated in that tournament. What was the experience like for you? Yeah, um, I thought go, going into it, um, you never really knew what to expect. It was kind of just getting a bunch of guys together and throwing them on all different teams. But it turned out to be really fast-paced, skilled um, overall tournament. And like Danny kind of touched on there, not being able to see the guys for as long as COVID's been going on, it was good to get back on the ice with them and see some new faces coming to the league and some old guys that you've played against getting the chance to play together. So I think the experience was a ton of fun and something I'd definitely do again. Denny, you were invited to St. Louis Blues rookie camp uh, during the, during that, uh, the summer alongside Andrew Parrott. What was your experience like getting first taste of pro hockey? It was it was really fun. It was a great experience. It, it was even better that I was with Perry, you know, being able to go with a teammate, knowing someone already there and definitely made me more comfortable. But it was a great time, great experience. You know how, how all the pros do it. A day in the uh, life of a pro is pretty cool. They, their facility and stuff is just top notch. And I uh, definitely went in there with open eyes and took everything in. Now, two follow-up questions to that. What did the Blues like about your game? And maybe one thing that they told you to prove upon. They liked my uh, creativity with the puck, you know, being able to make plays in the offensive zone. They thought I was a very skilled player with uh, lots of offensive, uh, what's the word for it? Offensive IQ or something like that, I don't know. But they liked my offensive part of the game. They thought I could get a, a better in the D zone for sure. Something that they thought I needed to work on and being more physical. They're, that's their style of play. They said that they like uh, playing a rough game, rough style. So they thought that I could work on that a little bit more to help help that part of my game. So uh, before we go on to the next question, let's throw out our, our first trivia question for today's show. It's a busy week for the attack, two home games. This one's for two tickets to tomorrow night's game against the Kitchener Rangers. William Portacalis was traded to the Owen Sound attack for a draft pick in which round and year? Like I mentioned, call Mark Perry there, and you can secure yourself two tickets to tomorrow night's game against the Kitchener Rangers. Now, William, not a lot of OHL players get to play for their hometown OHL team they grew up watching. What was that experience like on draft day when you heard your name was selected by the Mississauga Steelheads? Yeah, no, it was uh, it was definitely a crazy day uh, going into the draft. Um, I think hearing my name called, I grew up watching Mississauga. They, before they're the majors and then now they're the steelhead so I grew up watching them for quite a while and it was always a dream to kind of play for a hometown be living at home with everything and hearing my name called uh I was definitely super excited probably not as excited as my mom was but uh yeah it was it was honestly a dream come true I literally I couldn't I couldn't have asked for to be drafted anywhere else at the time I thought that was the best place for me but um now being over here um really liking the adjustment and i love everybody here so i think this is a better fit for me just a few uh follow-up questions to that what pros and cons are there for playing for a uh, hometown team um i think the pros for sure um it's got to be you know you don't really have to adjust too much you're not going out of your comfort zone or leaving your comfort zone you're still at home in your own bed um, your parents are kind of making you your favorite food all the time. And not to say that my belts here don't do that because they're, they're second family to me and they've been really, really good. But I think just not having to change your routine of things is definitely a big pro. And I think a con is definitely not being able to like kind of grow up. I mean, living there, your parents do everything for you and, once you have to be away from home, you kind of have to take more responsibility onto yourself and have to grow as a person and be more um, social and be out there a little bit more. So I think that's probably the only con is just having to 
again, change your routine and be stop being outside your comfort zone. And then final question, when the Mississauga Steelheads come uh, into Olin Sound to play the attack, what's the most intimidating thing about the Bayshore that you appreciate now as a member of the team? <laughs> uh, it's got to be the fans. Um, in Mississauga, we, we had such a big rink and we couldn't really fill it up too much. So it was it was more making our own noise on the bench than it was relying on the fans to do so. So coming into the Bayshore, it's a little bit of a smaller rink and the fans are just nuts. And before when you used to come in, you'd hate the fans. You're like, God, like these people just, they don't stop. And then now you appreciate it so much because you're like, wow, like these, they're, they're cheering for you. Like this is, this is why you, score big goals like you would jump into the glass here and you're jumping into fans and miss saw you jump in the glass and it's like to dress as a seat night every night so you're jumping in and it's no one there so it's uh it's real it's really good i appreciate all the fans here but it was definitely one of the toughest things to to come into the Bayshore. shore that's awesome um the fans <laughs> that that was a great answer sorry you caught me off guard with that one um uh, both of you have recently graduated from high school. This is your first season uh, as an OHL player, not as a high school student. So what's life uh, like for Denny Gould and Will Porticalis uh, now that you don't have to go to school? I'm loving it, that's for sure. It's uh, definitely a lot better living here, uh, not having to go to school and, you know, get to sleep in an extra hour every morning and just go to the rink for – breakfast club in the morning having to do a workout or just roll out stretch get loose in the morning and you get to go back for about two hours and then back at 2 30 in most days and that's pretty much my every day it's pretty nice not having to do any school work is he kind of well before you answer that there. There. yeah uh, it was kind of hard to hear Denny's answer, but uh, Denny, I don't know if your mom will be too happy with that being a school teacher. No, no, she's not. She's trying to get me to do more school, but it is what it is. <laughs> Denny, you got to fix your Wi-Fi, right. Paul. <laughs> Go ahead, Will. Uh, what's your day-to-day -day life like? Um, from what I heard from Denny's, it's... Uh, it's pretty much the same. Uh, we we wake up a little bit later, go to breakfast club, and like you said, get a little stretch, a little workout, and then sometimes like we'll go out with the guys in breakfast club, have a little something to eat, or we'll go back to our billets, make ourselves something to eat, or get a little more of a nap in, play some chill, and then head back over to the rink for 2.30 practice. Now, uh, we only have about five minutes to break, so we'll throw out one question, then go with quickly to the highlights against Windsor. Uh, being some of the veteran forwards, how often are the rookies asking you guys for tips, whether it be off the ice in practice or in a game, and we'll start out with Will. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think the rookie group that we have uh, this year, um, they're all very vocal. Um, they they like to – I sit next to a couple guys that will kind of chat with me and – even even about stuff that isn't really hockey related, they're not too scared to reach out and just be like, you know what, I'm having a little bit of trouble with this. Um, what do you think? What do you have advice for this going on or this going on? So I think they're they're good in the sense that they're very vocal and they're not really afraid to come talk to us at all. Yeah, like Porto said, just giving them as much advice as possible. And, you know, some of the rookies come up and ask me, ask me what it was like my first se season in the league. And I just, we talk about that, how it's, how they're doing and stuff like that. And they're having quite a bit of success. Our rookies have been doing pretty good for us. So they seem to be pretty comfortable with today. Now, uh, I alluded to a busy week this week. It was also a busy week for Owen Sound last week. Before we go to break, let's quickly throw to the highlights last Wednesday against the Winter Spitfires. Door side was Gwyn Don, and he tried to tip that home. Gwyn Don, the clearing attempt blocked. He'll keep it in for Shabrikov. 
Back to the point, Shafe. Shafe tees it up. That tipped in front. Medina doesn't see it. It's lifted wide, and it's in. That rebound battled around in front of the net. Finally. Miko D'Amico was looking short side, missed the net. Eat him up. For Maggio. Maggio drags and fires. Chenard stops him. Back for Ladd. Maggio, top of the circle in front of the net. The score! D'Amico with the goal! Maggio and Ladd with the assist on the sixth goal of the year for D'Amico on the power play. Seed. He'll head back and then just dump it right up the middle. of Flaherty's going to step on it. Snipe! Chris Paul Flaherty! And it's 2-1. Things, and obviously that is something that Kyle McDonald has noticed about his new linemate, Millet, in winning faceoffs. Well, he wouldn't have even had a practice yet either, would he? That was a trade that was just completed yesterday. There's a chance and a goal for Zito. 3-1, Spitfires. Parrott's going to hustle back. Watched by D'Amico. Parrott off to the races. He's out to center here on the near side for Gore. Schnard goes to the bench. Net is empty. Cooley ahead for McDonald. And the Spitfires will score an empty netter. The highlights from Owen Sound's 4-1 loss last Wednesday against the Windsor Spitfires. Uh, William, just a minute and a half till we go for break. It was a difficult game for you guys. A lot of uncharacteristic plays. And from my vantage point, not the team we saw the last few weeks. Uh, what did the coaches say to you guys after the game Wednesday? Yeah, um, you know, I think we just kind of, uh, we had a game plan that we went in there with. And I think we, as a team, kind of strayed away from it. And it was just, you know, it was just kind of a, Kicking, kicking the butt that we uh, we can't really stray away from our game plan because that's when we get into those situations and that's when the team's not playing the best. So I think it was just more a um, couple tips and advice on how to get back to playing attack hockey. And I think um, the next two games we got back to it and that's when we were more successful. We're uh, going to throw the quick commercial break here. On the other side of the break, we'll have more highlights from last week. What's in the hat? A weekend preview and plenty more here with the guys here on Attack Wrap on Rogers TV. program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. Welcome back, Eddie Brock. It's been a long time. I miss you so much. Come chaos. I request a duel to the death. If you lose, your wife will suffer dire consequences. One of us has lied. Let us let God decide. Hello, everyone. I'm Gregory Charles. Join me for the show Illumination, a celebration of the winter solstice. Canadian artists will introduce you to Canada's traditions and legends. Discover Neon Dreams in Halifax, Chantal Kravianchuk in Winnipeg, Kaylee Cardinal in Calgary, La Boutine Souriante in Gatineau, and many more. See you there.
back to Attack Rap, where your co-host, Zach Scribner and Adrian Musso, joined by William Portacalis and Denny Gore of the Owen Sound Attack. We saw the highlights on the last side of the break there. Uh, William, three goals were scored less than 10 seconds after a turnover Wednesday night. Our turnover is something the coaching staff talked about needing to clean up in order to salvage the road trip. Yeah, absolutely. Um, turnovers, whether it's on the blue line or anywhere, pretty uh, they're pretty key factors to an opposing team's offense and as well as to your offense. And I think um, just on our game there Wednesday night, it was one of the, one of the things that really hurt us, and that's definitely not a part of our game plan. And like I said, that was one of the ways we strayed from it. Denny, it may not have been the result you guys were looking for, but got on point only being an hour from uh, the WFCU Center. Did you have any fri friends or family in the stands watching you play? Yeah, I did have a lot of friends and family. It was pretty. It's pretty cool always going there because every time I go there, it's close for my friends to be able to go watch me play, and a lot of my family and friends do. So it's really cool being able to play there. Last uh, our last game there, I got two goals in front of them, so it was pretty cool. Nothing this time, but it's still fun to be able to play in front of them. I, I would imagine that they attend all the games close to Sarnia because Grand Point's in the in the tri in the middle of the triangle there, Sarnia, London, Windsor. Do they right, head down right. to all three of them? Yeah, they do. Mostly Windsor and Sarnia the most because London can be pretty tough to get tickets sometimes, but most of the times they try to make it there. Now uh, we'll we'll talk a little bit about uh, captains now, Denny. You've had two good captains during your time in Orange Sound, Mark Woolley and Aiden Dudas. They've made an impact on the fans. And teammates here in Owen Sound, what impact uh, have both of them had on you? Uh, they've been, they b were both uh, really good leaders. Wolves this year has been a great leader for us so far. And Aiden, or dudes, was, uh, he was outstanding. You know how good he was. Uh, I took a lot in from him for sure, being able to play with him every day, practice. And he was, a, he was an outstanding player. Was, he was fun to watch and fun to play with. He was. He was really good, really, and, you know, him going to World Jays and everything that happened there is pretty cool to say I played with someone like that. And, yeah, Wolves has been top-notch captain ever since he got the letter. He's been really good, really good leader. He knows how to get all the boys fired up before a game, and he knows what to say and stuff. He's been nothing but the best. William, before we get a word on you from uh, your perspective of Mark Woolley's leadership, your first season in Mississauga, you had NH current NHLers on your team in Owen Tippett, Ryan McLeod, and Thomas Harley. What was it like having those leaders in your dressing room as a 16-year-old? Yeah, no, uh, I think I sat next to Tippy in the room. So uh, my first year on my left-hand side was our OA captain, Cole Carter, and to the right of me was uh, Tippy, and it was it was kind of like I don't want to say weird, but it was cool to see how these guys um, really manage their time in the rink. They'd be in the gym before every practice, every game, just doing a little workout, doing a little something. Like they'd never be at their stall, just sitting there. They'd always be out and about doing something to try and improve their game and um, sitting sitting next to them uh, I'd always try and nitpick their brain and kind of be like oh so how did you how did you get to where you needed to be now and uh, just kind of that thing and one of the main things that um, I think kind of stuck with me was there was I think it was probably my third or fourth practice and I noticed a trend with uh, Thomas Harley he would always come into the dressing room 30 minutes after everybody was off the ice. And the one practice I was out there and I just stayed on the ice. I was just wanted to see what he was doing. And he would work on the same shot over and over and over from the spot he played on the power play. And I, I was like, Hey, like, what are you doing? And he's like, the only way I'm going to be able to score every single shot from this position is if I practice it more than everybody else. And after that, I stayed on the ice almost every practice with them. I practiced my own thing. Obviously, I wasn't on the power play my first year. We had a pretty stacked up team, but um, I'd be doing my own thing at the other end, whether it was tight angle shot in front or 
getting out of corners in different situations. And I think just based on seeing what those professional guys do was something really big and keen for me um, developing as a hockey player. Just a, a few things before we throw it to the highlights from Flint last Friday. We'll throw out the trivia question again. William Portacalis was traded from the Mississauga Steelheads here to Owen Sound for a draft pick in which round. And uh, we always enjoy asking this question to everyone on the show. We'll start out with Denny and then to William. What was both of your welcome to the OHL moments? Uh, probably, I'd say, when I, when I got my first goal at the odd uh, cash it was a pretty cool moment being able to score a goal in front of that many people. I've never played in front of that many fans before because the odd gets pretty filled up. So definitely when I got my first goal at that arena, it was a pretty garbage goal, but it was pretty cool being able to get my first one on the belt. I think same for me too. Um, first goal is something you never forget. And I was fortunate enough to have it at home against Erie. And I think just after it went in, I just remember all the lights going off and the spotlight coming and every like everybody that was on the ice just came and pretty much just tackled me into the boards and just seeing like how excited they were for me to get my first goal and knowing that my parents were in the stands along with the rest of all of Mississauga, that's pretty much family to me. Um, seeing them after the game all like smiling and wanting to take pictures, I think it was uh, it was really special and it was definitely a really good welcome to the OHL moment. It was definitely a goal-filled game last Friday night versus Flint. Let's throw it to those highlights. That should say win. Ties for the attack. Plenty of young talent to go around. Firebirds with a four on two now. Giroux, far side, finds the motto. Save it, Piercy scores! for the Firebirds tonight. D'Amato works it down low. Hayes in, he scores! Ten seconds into the power play. Gavin Hayes goes top shelf. And the Firebirds take a 2-0 lead. Pokes it ahead. Giroux comes in. Reverses back to the far point for D'Amato. 30 seconds to go on the five on three. Minute 30 to go on the five minute major. Hayes a quick shot. He scores! Hustle by Logan Lassie. To the point, Parrott lets it fly, tip, they score. Colby Barlow does it again. His fourth goal versus the Firebirds this year. Third on the deflection. His 11th of the year, and the attacker on the board at three. Face off one in the offensive end, but Sir back Petrovsky couldn't keep in at the blue line. Now off and seal. Brennan Offman in all alone. He scores! Short-handed goal for Brennan Offman. And what a goal it was. It's 4-1 to Firebirds. Kennard behind his net. 3.40 to go in the second period. Barlow outlets one for Denny Gore. Good speed. Gore, but Michael McLean comes back to prevent off the puck for the moment. Gore in. Gore looks to send one across, and they score. Stepan Makacek will clean up the rebound there. Good rush up ice by Owen Sound. They cut it back to a two goal lead for the Firebirds, four to two. Firebirds win the neutral zone face up. We'll try that again. Turned over, Burrows in front, he scores. Stunned him big time on the play. Bertucci can't get it out. Burrows in the circle, turned over, down low. Terry comes back and they score. Burrows gets the goal, Makachek the assist, it's Burrows second of the game. 
Turned over, down low, they score. Offensive zone draw, Ethan Hay in there. Wins it back to the point. Petrovsky tries to battle with Burroughs to keep it in. No luck there out the center ice. Look out here, serve back Petrovsky now. In, takes a shot, he scores. Lombardi with it. In front for Hayes. Perry recovers. Sends one up ice. Denny Gore with the lane. Denny Gore around D'Amato. Has the backhand. Throws one to the net and scores. Bring anything in the last couple minutes here. Portacalis might have something to say about it. In front to the backhand. And they do. Logan LeSage is going to make it 8-4. to four. There it is. An, a very eventful Owen Sound win. 8-4 to four over the Flint Firebirds for their third meeting of the season between the two teams. Now, Denny, this game had just about everything. Um, Mark Woolley returns uh, to the lineup after being out for around seven days. What goes through your mind when you see your captain get a five-minute major and about five minutes into the game uh, so early? It was definitely a tough bounce for us, but that's just the way Mark plays, and he's going to do that every time, 10 times out of 10. It's just how it was an awkward hit, and it, it happens. It was tough to that we dropped three right away. Our penalty kill wasn't the best, obviously, but... It was a good job by us fighting back and staying in the game, not quitting right away. And we ended up winning that game pretty good. So it was a good game for us, for sure. Down 3-0 and then 4-1, it seemed like the comeback, the comeback really felt like it was possible when you guys scored two goals in 10 seconds span there in late in the second. What kind of energy did the, that give the guys going into the room in the second intermission? Yeah, I think it, uh, it, gave, it gave us a sense of urgency. Um, just knowing that we were still in that hockey game. And, and I think um, scoring those goals, uh, Flint going back into their room, we're kind of thinking to ourselves, like, okay, like these guys aren't quitting, and we definitely weren't. And I think just everybody in the room um, was so confident that we were going to be coming back and that we just weren't, weren't going to let up. We just kept going and um, – I forget who it was. Someone said uh, one goal at a time, and sure enough, we went out there and got the first one, got another one, got another one, and the boat just kept going. Just before we go on, we do have a trivia question winner. Joseph Gamble knows the Owens on Attack traded a 12th round pick in the 2024 draft to the Mississauga Steelheads, and I'll go out on a limb and say one of the best draft picks Dale's ever traded in the 12th round. So congratulations, Joseph. You win two tickets to tomorrow night against the Kitchener Rangers, and we'll throw out the other one here before Adrian carries on. Uh, Danny Gore has 26 points this season, already more than he had in his rookie season. How many points did Denny score in his first season in the OHL? Those will be tickets for Saturday night against the Sarnia Sting. This game really saw the offensive, uh, offensive stars of the team put up points and lead the way. Will, what does it do to the team in the locker room when you see leaders leading by example. Yeah, I think um, for sure it picks everybody else up. And I think when guys that are getting points and they're supposed to be getting points, they start doing just that. I think everyone else kind of starts to follow along with them. And I think that's the whole basis besides uh, leading from example. And as you can see, our younger guys are really picking it up and they're helping out the older guys a ton by putting up a ton of points and uh, making it a little bit easier for us to win every game. Now the, the out, the outpour of offense could be contribute, uh, could be caused by Joey Hishin. You guys get to work with him every day. He was an offensively gifted player as a, as an Owen sound attack himself. Uh, what is it like having the former NHL forward giving you pointers every day at practice, Denny? It's awesome. It, it's awesome having him around for sure. He's a great, he's a great guy as well as he knows a lot of stuff about the game and loves the game. He'll uh, take any chance he gets to help you out. And he, he knows, uh, he knows a lot of ways, a lot of tricks and tips that he can give you. And it's pretty cool working with him every day and the drills he does for us and how much he does for us is crazy. So yeah, we're definitely fortunate to be able to have him around the rink all the time. And uh, <clears throat> William, uh, what are your first impressions on Hish? Uh, you've been here for a couple weeks in Owen Sound now. Yeah, no, um, Hish is definitely he's definitely one of the uh, best offensive coaches I've had. Um, 
I just know like after every practice, um, both all the coaches are on the ice, but Hish works mostly with the forwards and he just works on all the little things that help us uh, to score goals, whether it's in tight or making a quick move uh, through the middle of the ice to open up a stick lane to get the puck towards the net. And I think Hish, based on his knowledge that he has, is incredible. And it's like Denny said, we're very fortunate to have him and be able to kind of nitpick his brain. And um, yeah. Now, uh, both of you guys are veterans on the team, so I'll pose the question. Is there a rookie on the team that's play has surprised you or you've been impressed with so far this season? Uh, we'll start with Denny and then Will. Uh, a lot of our rookies have been having a lot of success, but it's definitely uh, probably Colby Barlow. The way he the way he puts the puck in the net is crazy. I found him a couple times and he was buried for me, but I love playing with him, and he, he acts like an older guy around the, around the room and stuff, and he's pretty confident, so... It's definitely good having him, being able to have the, this much success as he has, being an 05. So he's been pretty impressive so far. Yeah, I know. Bars has been amazing for us. I know he's given me a couple of apples there too. But uh, I got to say, Chafer, um, you know, I, 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 knew, I knew Bars coming in. I've kind of, like, seen him play. I never really knew Chafe. And I think for Chafe being the size he is, just being able to – outskate everybody on the ice and he's not he's not afraid to use his body and get into all these different corners with these big guys is definitely really impressive and he's definitely been uh putting on a good show for us and everybody with his points as well now uh will mentioned it uh earlier on about his favorite thing about playing in the date in the base shore so denny what's your favorite part about playing uh in front of the own sound fans uh, I definitely agree with Porto. The fans are amazing. They're really fun to play against. It's a great atmosphere at the rink. Makes me wanna, makes me wanna play in front of those fans every night. It's uh, we're definitely fortunate to have those fans uh, to play in front of. But just I don't know what it is. It's just I love playing at the Bay Shore more than any other rink. It's different for sure playing there. Uh, one last question for both of you guys before we throw it to the final highlight. What's one life lesson that you've taken away from the pandemic? Uh, Definitely don't take anything for granted. Um, I think a lot of the times guys look at sports or even going out to a grocery store, or whatever it is, playing with your friends. And it's kind of always been like, yep, yeah, like we'll do the same thing tomorrow, wake up, do the same thing, just go out there, go through the motions. And I think now um, kind of looking back on it, it's, it's something that you really have to be fortunate to be able to do these things because again we went through a time when we still are going through it that um, we can't wake up and do these things every single day so definitely uh, don't take anything for granted and work as hard as you can with everything you do and put it all on yeah, I agree with what Poro said but also uh, take what you can get like in the summers when we weren't allowed to go to the gyms or weren't allowed to skate or anything like that, you know, taking what you can get, doing Zoom videos with your trainers and lending or borrowing equipment, stuff like that. Just you're not always going to get what you want, but you got to take what you can get. And uh, we'll quickly throw up to last Saturday's highlights. Uh, the final game, the Owen Sound Attack and Flint Firebirds met for this season. Up 5-3 in the face-off department. Trailing 4-3 to in the shots. It's been a pretty tight game between these two. Chance in front for Tuzzi. Oh, my goodness. Nick Shannard with the save of the night in the first period. Parrott with it now near side. Bryant with it across the blue line. Cuts in the middle. Looks for Jay. Backhands one, and they score. Logan Lesage caught Nicoloni sliding to the near side post. Send it to the far side post. Back comes Burroughs now, a quick shot, and they score. Hot. Giroux now to the point for DeLine. DeLine, quick shot for the point, they score! Who else? Riley Piercy deflects it in front. It's a six-game goal streak, and the Firebirds trail by just one. Riley Piercy, you done it again. Nice job settling a bouncing puck at the blue line. Minute to go on the power play, seven in the second period. Firebirds looking to tie things up. A shot, they score! Zach 
Zachary Giroux tips it home. In front, Giroux. Giroux, back door, Offman, score! Near side, Portacalis with 35 to go on the power play. Portacalis down low. To the point, Barlow over. Sadly, one timer lets it fly. Blocked down in front, moves to the side of the net, and they score. Move Bertucci. Burrows goes wide, looks to center a pass. Great job by the first round pick of the Firebird Bertucci. Chance in front now. Game done. Scores. This is the faceoff back to the line. Over he goes. Offman. D'Amato now keeps in, takes the shot, tipped around, loose in front. Where is it? And that'll do it. There it is, Owen Sound's 4-3 win against the Flint Firebirds last Saturday. And we'll start off this recap with a little bit of controversy. Adrian and I are split on this one, and we're wondering what side did you fall on. Adrian liked the jerseys. I thought they were atrocious. What did you guys feel about Flint's jersey Saturday night? We'll start out with Denny. I thought they were pretty cool, honestly. You know, changing up a little bit. I thought I think they're pretty cool. They, they weren't too bad. They're pretty sharp. Yeah, um, I kind of have a little bit of mixed opinion on them uh they're definitely different that's uh that's an obvious but uh they're a little a little bit tacky if you ask me uh i kind of like the white in the middle i was in a uh, real big fan of and but yeah like they were different so i'll give them that but yeah i'm kind of kind of on the fence about it and uh oh. william you oh when you were able to jump in offensively in this one on the power play, uh, six goals since coming to Owen Sound. I think it's safe to say uh, the change of scenery has treated you well so far. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think just coming here, again, my first game here, I uh, got the monkey off my back, which I think was really, really important for me. And after that, I think just from constant uh, talks with like the guys on the team, they're they're all just kind of lifting me up and just saying, like, keep going. Like, you got one, now get two. Like, keep going with this. And I think um, they're, they're definitely a really big part of my success this far. Now, last week off air, Nick Chenard told us uh, that you fit really well in the room after the trade. How are your first few days here after being acquired from the attack? And how, have you, uh, how was that transition for you meeting the new teammates? Yeah, um, you know, obviously it's it's definitely a lot different. I've been with Mississauga pretty much my whole HL career, but uh, coming over here the first day, just kind of meeting everybody. Uh, I knew a couple faces from the PBHH tournament, um, and then just from kind of social media, like I knew some of the guys. But um, I'm a very vocal person in the dressing room on the ice, so I think after kind of that first day went by, I – started to get a little bit vocal and the guy it just fit in with everything the guys had in that dressing room and now it's just it's just normal and I love it all right it's time for raw or for Gray County's favorite Tuesday night game show what's in the hat guys I have my attack hat here some questions inside of it I'm gonna pull it out read it quickly you give me the first thing that comes to your head no explanation needed all right uh, we'll start with Denny every time, then Will, you answer second. Are we clear? Yep. <laughs> All right. First question. Go-to late-night snack. Cheers. Cookies. Who's the, who talks the most in the locker room? Fantino. Wolves. Oh. I haven't heard Mark Woolley this year. Yeah, I know been Fantino most of the time. Your number one superstition? Uh, take my stick toe to heel, maybe. Take my stick heel to toe. And I can't have my stick, my the tape of the stick touching the ground. Two more questions. All right, this one's a controversial one. Bench cut. Uh, start bench cut. Crosby, McKinnon, McDavid. Uh, start McDavid for sure. Cut or bench Crosby. Cut McKenna. I'm the exact same. I got to go with that too. And last question. Here, who is your celebrity crush? 
Uh, I've been watching the so uh, suits recently, so probably Rachel off uh, suits. Um, she's my screensaver, Karina Koff. <laughs> There we go, another, another edition of What's of... in the Hat. You say uh, you say start, obviously, McDavid, uh, Denny, but your teammate Gavin Bryant said cut McDavid. That Denny. doesn't surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> Only uh, three minutes left here, so we'll ask you guys a bit of fun questions. Uh, who's the best minor hockey player you've ever played against? Minor hockey. Huh. Probably Shane Wright. My, in minor hockey, I played against Shane Wright, so probably definitely him. Pretty pretty easy answer, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, mine's uh, whenever I used to get called up, I used to play against Jack Hughes a little bit, so I got to say Jack Hughes for mine. Wow. Um, and now, when doing a tack wrap, a lot of uh, your family members or friends and family from back home are watching – if you had one thing to say to them right now, what would it be? We'll start with you, Denny. Oh, I have no idea. I maybe I don't know. Going home <laughs> a week, hopefully, so I'll see them then. <laughs> um, definitely miss them, and uh, I hope you're done Christmas shopping for me. So, like Denny said, I'll be coming home in a little bit. So, better see some stuff on the Christmas tree. Better see some Lululemon. Oh, yeah. Fell to that. Just uh, about a minute left here. So we'll do a uh, a week preview for the Owen Sound Attack, a weekend preview, I should say. It's a busy week for the Attack this week, getting their fair share of Midwest Division games. The Attack kick off the week tomorrow, hosting the Kitchener Rangers for their fourth meeting of the season. Then Friday night, the Attack travel to London to face the Knights for, their, for the seventh time this season, seven of ten games against the London Knights. The Knights got a big boost back in their lineup as Luke Evangelista was cut from Team Canada at the World Junior Camp. Then Saturday night's the last game for the Owensound Attack before the Christmas break as they are home to the Sarnia Sting. The last time the two teams met, the Attack lost to the Sting 4 nothing in Sarnia. Guys, uh, we'll take this time to say a big thank you for joining us and uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and the best of luck this week. Thank you. Thank you. That's... Uh, Denny Gore and William Portacalis of the Owen Sound Attack, Zach Scribner and Adrian Musso, co-hosts of the show. We want to wish you guys a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. It's the last show we're doing uh, before we take a little bit of a Christmas break, but we'll be back uh, in January. So again, we wish everyone Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and to stay safe. And thank you for tuning in to Attack Wrap this year on Rogers TV. TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. destination for Christmas cheer this season. Unwrap over 100 festive movies with over 20 new and premier films, including